What's up y'all, welcome to the channel and I'm gonna be teaching you guys the most requested thing which is how to switch characters better and understand the fundamentals of switching on Naruto Storm connections. Full disclosure before I start this guide is this is something that's gonna get better over time. This guide's purpose is to show you the things that one, aren't in tutorial mode, two, explain the fundamentals of why these are so important, and three, how to actually do that so that you can practice on your own time. Again, this guide is gonna help you and no guide on YouTube or anywhere else is this going to magically make you better with character switching. That's simply something that's gonna take time, experience, and a lot of training. So just wanted to get that out there. With all that out of the way, let's get straight into it. So I'm gonna go from easiest to most difficult techniques when it comes to character switching and all the different stuff from basics to like masterclass things that you can do when it comes to switching and why they're important so make sure you guys stick to the end of the video for that and let me know if you guys want a two-man character guide as well as understanding fundamentals of character switching and character usage in general is definitely something that is extremely important when running two-man since you're not as protected but let me know if you guys are even interested in that in the first place. Comment down below if you would like that and I will get on that right away. So the first thing that I'm going to teach you guys that's really, really simple to do and understand is that when you're switching characters and you're starting a combo with your own character, it's extremely important if your opponent is using their support at the time to switch in between your combo if you can. The reason for this is that supports will get canceled out if you're in range of hitting your opponent and they call their supports. If you switch out at the right time, it'll cancel out any any and all supports that are already active on the field. And that basically punishes them for using their support at the wrong time. And it's really fundamentally important to understand when to switch and not to just switch in the middle of a combo just because, but to wait for your opponent to use their support so that you can punish them immediately and get the damage that you're supposed to. It's something I fundamentally see a lot of people not understand when to switch and the timing of it. The second thing that I'm going to teach you guys is how to double dash with your characters. Now this is something I also consider extremely easy to do but there's two ways to use this offensively and defensively. So defensively of course is the easiest way to do this. Go to training mode, go a little bit back from uh, your opponent of course, dash with your main character and quickly switch out. What you'll notice is that your character is going to complete the dash on his own and it's going to go across the map as far as it can possibly go. Now defensively, this is good for multiple different reasons. You can use this technique to stop opponents from hitting you with jutsu. Say if there's a fireball coming straight point blank at you, you can double dash and have your support take the damage instead of yourself. Uh, you're thinking to yourself, well, why would I waste the support to do that when I have subs? And the point is to keep your subs and to keep guard pressure away from you as much as possible. So if it costs you a quick support, then that's all it takes. You can also use this defensively in the air to get priority on landing. This is definitely a little bit more advanced, but it's definitely something doable if you go to training mode or something you can practice online. When you're fighting somebody in the air, you'll notice most of the time you're going to go turn for turn, burning subs, trying to outmatch each other and see who can chocolate dash back to back. But if you simply switch out of your character mid air and before landing hit the ground, you'll definitely get priority over your opponent. And it's extremely useful for getting out of air supports, getting priority in the air and on the ground. So definitely keep note for that as well defensively. And there's not too many more defensive uses for double dashing. So now I'm gonna go ahead and convert into the offensive, which is a lot more useful for breaking guards and getting at your opponent while they're off guard. So what you can do is go to training mode again and double dash, but this time you're gonna follow your character instead of standing there. So use your character, dash, and immediately follow them. And what you'll notice is once they're stunned by the initial first character of your support, there'll be a small opening or amount of time that you can also follow up with a dash or an attack. That's a stun frame that allows you to attack your opponent, especially if they're off guard or if you want to guard break them extremely quickly. It works if they're in yellow or red. You can use this from full screen to close range and it works the same either way. Definitely a very, very useful mechanic, especially for guard pressure and you can really get creative with this depending on your characters and what type of properties they have. And I'll get more into that in a little bit during the latest part of the video. There's a lot of stuff in this vid. So again, next up, I'm gonna go ahead and cover something that's a little bit more basic along with 
why you should be double dashing, why you should be changing characters constantly, which is a basic fundamental answer of supports come back a lot faster if you switch into them rather than use them naturally. So what I mean is if you have one character, you have two supports and you just use them regularly as supports using L1 or R1, then the cooldown will be normal, right? It's going to be the natural speed that the game allocates. But if you switch and use a Jutsu or switch and do an action into these characters, the cooldown will be halved or even quicker than that. And that's something that's extremely useful if you're using characters with long cooldowns, extremely useful if you're using characters that have things and properties that you could be using more often. This is why switching characters constantly is extremely useful. The main reason being cooldowns are cut significantly and you are rewarded for doing so. And with that drop of knowledge, we're going to go ahead and get into the intermediate to difficult things to do with character switching. And we're going to start off with using Jutsus with your main character and quickly switching to your next character so that it doesn't take the same amount of cooldown as using your support as regular. I know that was a jumble of words, but basically what you want to do is master the aspect of using jutsus with your main and switching out quickly so that again your cooldown is significantly lessened and you also have more priority at different points depending on the situation i'm going to go ahead and go show you guys some clips and examples where i do this and it's definitely definitely useful when you're doing stuff like this another technique that i want to go ahead and show you guys how to do that i don't use too much myself but it's definitely something that you can do with supports and with switching is having characters grab after you switched out of them so this is a little bit more difficult and this is pretty much the more advanced section of the guide which is you can mash your attack button switch your character out and have them grab while you're moving around now i know most people automatically are thinking what the absolute fuck that is insanely broken but one it's not too practical it's not something you use unless you're really styling and two supports and how the game is made and connections generally, you'll never ever see anybody do this, but it is something I know how to do, I just don't do often. So what you're gonna wanna do is mash the circle button a couple of times, and then before you end the string, hold the block button and circle and quickly switch out. And once you do that, your character will complete the action on its own. And it's definitely something, again, that's pretty useful depending on the character. Ideal characters to use this are such as EMS Sasuke, Madara Uchiha, Pain. There's characters like that that definitely give you stun frames if you um, do this properly. And it's definitely cool if you're just styling and if you're a style type player or if you're a really dominating opponent and you want to just do something cool. Again, it's not something that's too practical and it's quite risky if you do mess up, but it is something that you can do with character switching that's pretty cool in the game that they left in. And that's pretty much it in terms of all of the things that I can show you guys in terms of training mode. So now I'm going to do as I always do and hop on ranked. And this time, I'm not going to just show you guys the entire match. I'm going to really highlight the uses that I specifically use within this guide so that you guys aren't just watching the entire match and you have to wait for the moment. I'm going to really highlight the specific moments where I use the things that I'm showing you in this guide so that you can see it for yourself. And in the future, make sure you guys are absolutely voting on the character polls for the guides that you want in the future and comment down in the section below for what characters you want to see next. As for now on, I'm basically going to be doing guides in the order that I receive them since it makes it way easier for me to decide what character guides to cover. And I understand what you guys are actually asking me for, so I don't have to make character guides that you guys don't really want to see for characters you're not interested in. Shout out to Daemon, as he was one of the first people to request a character guide. So the next character guide is going to be Sasuke, the last, as he requested it. And after that, we're going to have a Kawaki guide suggested by Virtual Thug. And if you guys want a shout out on my next video, then make sure you guys also comment character guides that you would like to see. And eventually yours will absolutely show up along with your name and shout out. So make sure you guys are doing that. And that's pretty much it on the character switching guide. I really did enjoy making this guide. And there's a lot more tech when it comes to switching that I haven't shown and put out there. So there's a couple of gems and things out there that uh, are left. So let me know if you guys want a part two or a follow up to do certain tech that you uh you can do. I don't know how this is going to affect the community, but I'm definitely willing to put it out there if you guys want. So, yeah, Kaizen out.